Hey guys, this is Caspi with Ape, and today you join me for a very special video in which I attempt to build a one kilometer long space station. The largest space station I know of. Uh, but how am I going to do this? Well, my first order of business is to have a central beam around which the components of my space station will consist. So that beam obviously needs to be one kilometer long. So I decided to launch it in 100 meter segments because I think that's pretty much the perfect length because it doesn't sway on launch. And it means I only have to do like 10 or 11 launches because 11 would give me a nice middle where I can put this very important segment, but eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to push this on into orbit um, and this will be where we will dock the subsequent 9 or 10 beams to it. And um, yeah, so this just needs to get, I think an 80 kilometers will give me a little bit of leeway, but also means I will have sufficient delta V to get into orbit. Um, nicely enough, you can just use four big boosters on the side, and that easily makes it an SSTO with a bunch of fuel left over, because I will be using Werner thrusters on, um, I'll be using these Werner thrusters, you can see, to maneuver the rest of them in on the stage, because I don't want to leave Werner thrusters anywhere on um uh, the beam, and we decouple the boosters there, looking rather nice in a big uh, cross around the spacecraft. And now it's time to launch the second one. We'll cut most of the launch out because uh, you know it's a very, very long. Uh, well, it's not that long, but if there's going to be ten of them, that's a lot of launches. So anyway, after pushing ourselves into orbit, we get close to the space. Uh, well, to the space station, to the beam. Um, and th from there, we can just slow ourselves down, maneuver in a little, and here we are just doing our little maneuvering with the Werner thrusters. I put a bunch of Werner thrusters on the sides because I, there wasn't really enough um, to move, maneuver this easily. Um, so there's three on each side of each booster, and then three on the back and front so it can move forwards and backwards. So here we are just connecting these two beams together, just like that. And we just need to twist it a little bit because the magnetism won't pull around this massive spacecraft that much. But yeah, so we just use the Werner thrusters to push ourselves into the right orientation until it docks, which hopefully will happen because these are 100 meter beams, quite hard to maneuver. But um, as you can see, you just have to keep swaying it and playing with it until it um, docks together. And there we go, two of them dock together. We'll uh, get rid of those boosters. You can see them decoupling in a beautiful X. Um, and yes, that is a 200 meter beam. Each of these beams has uh, four big docking ports around the outside uh, to which I'll be docking mostly gravity rings. Um, there'll be a large gravity ring, two smaller gravity rings, and some fueling rings. So here we are launching the other one and we'll just uh, dock that here. These are gonna get progressively more cut out because there are 10 of them and they're all the same. And the launch isn't particularly interesting and maneuvering in's pretty easy. It's just the docking and seeing it really that's interesting with this. And there were a lot of them. So yeah, there we go. We'll get rid of that probe and get rid of those boosters. Nothing that doesn't have to be on this beam stays on this beam. So we get rid of the uh, probe, we get rid of the boosters, the boosters, um, well obviously we get rid of the boosters, the struts are all initially connected to the boosters so there's no um, residual struts. Um, anything that doesn't have to be on this beam does not stay on this beam. So here we are docking the fourth one together and with a little bit of shaking, maybe a little too much shaking, I realize that okay, I'm not going to be able to do this totally stock. I mean, technically it wasn't already totally stock because um, I'm using Kerbal Hanger Extender because I totally need that to build something this large, but it shakes around so much. So I install Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and we come back to it and it's not shaken at all. Good job, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, making this possible. So there we go, a 400 meter beam, only two mods so far. Obviously the uh, Hanger Extender isn't super important, but basically in totally stock care speed, this isn't possible because of physics. But with Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, you can at least build a 400 meter meter beam and we're going to dock on the fifth one which will make it a 500 meter beam um yeah these after a little while these became quite easy to do you just got to be slow at start and line yourself up as if you try and do it too quickly that's true of all dockings if you do it, try and do it too quickly it'll just take forever because you'll be flipping around it'll be basically impossible so we decouple those boosters again we get rid of the probe so there's no residual anything on this beam and that is 500 meters long and here's the sixth one just connecting um, swaying a little bit, me just trying to line it up and get it all docked in. Uh, that's uh, looking rather beautiful and looking rather gigantic. Look how tiny those giant boosters look compared to this massive beam. Um, and there goes the seventh one. I'm actually using cargo bays for the beam because it means I can put the docking ports like tucked backward into it so there's no kind of horrible seams where the docking ports um, uh, like connect so you can see it's all pretty much looks like one giant beam but yes that is I think seven six hundred meters I've kind of forgotten now I wasn't paying attention but we decouple that and we have our giant beam a little longer and here comes the eighth one I want to say 
<laughs> yeah, I believe this is the eighth one. So that is now 800 meters. We drift into darkness, so you can't see it that well. But I'll uh, go around to the day side so you can see the beauty of this gigantic beam. Rather nicely uh, safe under Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Get rid of the boosters, get rid of the probe, and save this as eight beams. I was right, it is eight. And here comes the ninth. Um, to connect to this and yeah all of these I pretty much did in a day because once you figure out how you actually need to do this Just line yourself up like 200 meters out and then slowly maneuver in it gets pretty easy So yeah, those are just nine beams all together in space. That is a 900 meter long beam Ready for the tenth beam and ready for the artificial gravity rings and a bunch of other stuff I'm gonna connect to it to come on to it. So yes nine beams in orbit 900 meters however when I come in to put the um, the tenth beam on, it just doesn't want to dock. And this one looks a little brash because I think this was actually my second attempt of docking this beam. But you can see that there just doesn't seem to be any magnetism pulling these two together. When I touch them together, there's just no there was no pull. I couldn't get them together. What I initially thought this was was the docking port on the last beam was too far into the docking into the cargo bay and it just wouldn't touch. And I was like, okay, I did tweak them around a bit. That probably makes sense. So yeah, that was what my thought was for this. So basically after attempting quite a few times to dock and it almost kind of looking like it's trying to work but just won't dock, I come up with a solution. And the solution is a very small um, docking adapter. It's just a small fuel tank and two docking ports to keep parts down pretty much. Um, and we'll just push this on into orbit. Everything else will be decoupled, obviously the rocket, the um, maneuvering system and the nose cone, all decoupled. Um, because we don't want any extra stuff on here. So this will break up the seamlessness a little bit, but hopefully this will fix it. So we get rid of the um, uh, the little tug and we'll just use the separatrons to deorbit that so it'll slam into the ground. And here we are bringing up the tenth beam once again. And when I try to dock it, the same problem happens. There's no there's no pull on it. It doesn't seem to, it just won't dock. And I tried this for about two hours and it just wouldn't. It, 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 it drove me crazy. There seems to be some weird upper limit in either KSP or Unity where you just can't make something this big or the docking ports just break down after a while or I, I don't know. I honestly have no idea what happened, but just, this just wouldn't dock on. And after two hours of trying this, I gave up. I put, I docked this to the side, um, Left it there, and I decided, okay, nine beams, that's fine. I'll just start bringing up the gravity rings. So, yeah, and you'll see that in a second after I finally give up on this, and I think I dock it to that docking port on the side. So, yes, I'm like, okay, 900 meters, great station. It's the best station. We, we, we got the best stations. China isn't taking our stations. Um, so we're going to send up the, uh, be the ring, and this is the large gravity ring. This consists of four parts, all looking like this. Um, and to launch it, I had to kind of put on this little beam, and you can see this, I'm saying beam so much in this video, but you can see that little metal beam which struts everything together, that all get, gets decoupled, and again, all the struts will be uh, paired to that so they won't fall off. And because this is slightly more complicated, the boosters won't do the maneuvering. Those will be dropped when we get into orbit, and all of the maneuvering equipment, the reaction wheels and the um, Verna thrusters are all connected to the, beam, uh, to the ring thing. And then the, those will all be decoupled as well because we don't want any residual anything. I was very, very insistent on keeping parts down because obviously this is going to be massive. That's one of the main explorations of this video is, is it possible with the amount of parts? Is it physically possible? Can you launch it? Can things be docked like this? And so far, other than that one idiosyncrasy, it's not looking bad. It'll get worse. Anyways, once we're in orbit um, and it launched pretty well, I thought that was kind of beautiful. Uh, we decoupled the boosters, of course. Um, which go away quite beautifully and we get rid of the nose cone as well. Um, they kind of hit each other But that's fine. We don't care about them anymore and we get to the beam the beam the word I have probably said a thousand times in this video and we just need to maneuver this in rather gently connect it um, Obviously rotate it 90 degrees or it's gonna be a pretty shitty ring um, So here we are just about to dock, but when I get there well, well at first I hit it too hard That's obviously not gonna dock. I'm just gonna bounce right off but after lots and lots of attempts, I experienced the same problem. The docking ports just aren't working. They're just not they're just not doing the thing. They're not docking. They're not doing their one job. They had one job, which they're not doing. So after a huge amount of this, um, just trying to get on there, and uh, a little bit of just suggestive bumping it, as you can see, which I found in the footage. I was like, that looks a little suggestive of me just like ramming it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I gave up on this ring. I was like, okay, there's a size limit somewhere in Unity, some weird check, and I get rid of that. So my, uh, after even trying to quick load and time warp and do everything, it just won't do it. So my plan was, 
Okay, I'll just launch the smaller rings. It'll be a little less impressive. It'll be 900 meters. It'll have smaller rings. So I start with the fueling ring. As I said, there's going to be two fueling rings, two small kind of science lab rings, and there was going to be one giant um, ring that you just saw made of four of those. But yeah, so I decided to launch this up. It has half the diameter of the big ring. I think maybe, okay, maybe this will work. Um, and it launches in much the same way. And this is fewer parts, and it's just generally a nicer little piece of thing. Um, and yeah, so we're launching this, and it's all going rather well. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, until a certain point, after a little bit of flipping and going into orbit, um, when I get into space, I fire up my engines again, just to get into orbit. But then, um, <laughs> some other weird physics idiosyncrasy happens, and it starts to sway a lot, like a huge amount. So I time warp to try and arrest that, and that doesn't work because it starts swaying a bit. It starts real gentle and then gets more and more ridiculous until it is swaying like a madman, swinging its arms. It breaks the beam that was holding it together and just starts going crazy. It's waving its arms around. It's being like, I don't want to be part of your space station tape, you piece of shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it goes crazy and eventually... Uh, it looks like it's stable, and then it breaks, um, because physics. <laughs> so, yeah, the rings might not happen. So then it just falls. I did decide I wanted to watch it. the rest of it burn up, though, because, I mean, this is going to look awesome. Um, so it falls into the atmosphere. So, conclusion-ish, this has kind of failed. The rings don't work, the docking doesn't work, but I'm not giving up. I built this all in the VAB with hangar extender. I connected it all. And I'm just going to hyper-edit it into orbit, because I want to see this in orbit. But before that, we're going to put it on the pad with full gravity on, and just sit back and see what happens. This is, by the way, at four times time accelerate, so you can see the majesty of this. You can see how freaking tall it is. You can see the VAB compared to this one kilometer tall space station. This space elevator style thing. So to answer your question, space elevators don't work in KSP. Or in real life, because they're just going to get broken, and then the cord's going to wrap around the Earth, and everyone on the equator's going to be like, Dude, I died! So they're not going to say anything. Um, but yeah, so it starts to explode and just falls apart in this beautiful mess. Um, but yeah, my actual plan was to hack gravity. Oh, but when I came back to it, when I reverted after hacking gravity, you can see it's broken time, it's so big. At the top left, year 99. We were on like day three. It's literally traveled through time, it's so big. But anyway, I, I reload the game, and I do manage to hyper it into orbit. And oh my god, that's a one kilometer space station in orbit. And we get our Kerbal out to just fly through the rings, and then physics says no. Um... I think this needs more struts. It's moving and it shouldn't be, standard KSP rules, but I did leave this in the video because, oh my god, look how awesome this looks. It's just like, no, I'm gonna kill you. It is Cthulhu. It is literally the Kraken. Um, yeah, I blame Danny for this. But anyway, after a few more struts, and not gonna lie, I'm time warping right now uh, so that it, there's no physics on it, I get some beauty shots of this giant station and, ah. Oh, Oh, look at the majesty of it. I know I cheated and this isn't as cool as it could have been, but oh, awesome. And then I'm like, I'm going to fly my Kerbal through it, and it's looking beautiful. We're flying through the rings, looking at all of these giant beams along the main beam, and ah, oh, then it starts swaying, and it starts swaying bad, and starts twisting, and time warping it helps for a second. But then the plan falls down. You can see that all of the rings on here quite nicely now, and there's a big comms array. But anyway, I do launch it one more time so that I can deploy the solar panels and stare at how unimpressive they are. I thought it was going to be like this giant array, because I obviously didn't have the scale on my mind, and oh. But anyway, might as well get a few beauty shots, but still. Okay, I didn't end up building a one kilometer space station. Actually, technically, I built a 900 kilometer space station. It was just one beam, but... Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, but still, you get to see the one kilometer space station in orbit. It's maybe possible, and I think I will come back to this with more mods. I think my problem is lack of mods. I think I should use tweak scale, maybe a little part welding, and we could put this together so we can make this majesty, this just beautiful thing able to fly through. By the way, that was 900 parts, which explains why I didn't use so many supports. That was a real problem, is that I couldn't use enough supports because I had to keep parts down because yeah it ran actually kind of fine because my computer's pretty good actually um so yeah it kind of worked but to answer your question can you build a one kilometer space station in stock KSP no it'll explode after 400 meters 
Um, and then with Kerbal re Joint Reinforcement, kind of, sort of, but there's some kind of upper limit. But anyway, I, I'm going to stop rambling. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope it wasn't too disappointing that I didn't really build a one kilometer space station. Um, and I hope you will come back uh, for, uh, for future videos. If you're new, then feel free to subscribe, and, and there's, uh, you can hit the, like hit the like button. Here we are at the end of the video with... Um, me end plate, and there's a couple more videos you can go check out. There's my KSP career mode, which is going rather nicely. Last time I landed a probe on Eve, and it ran out of electric charge. Spoilers. I, and then I landed the orbiter on Gilly, which was pretty cool. And we have a pretty big space station, not a kilometer long, but pretty big in that series, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you could also go check out this... Uh, video I'm doing for this upcoming series I am doing with the Beardy Penguin called Fall of Kerbin. It's a war series. You should totally check it out. And then there are links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you feel like looking at any of those. I'll see you next time.